Continue Google Cloud PubSub's last minute cheat sheet. I explained how PubSub works in the last video. Now let's take a look at message encryption. I summarized the key points of message encryption for the exam. You can learn the details from Google's documentation. PubSub encrypts message with the Google Manager keys by default, but you can also use the Custom Manager encryption keys, CMEK. It uses a service account to access Cloud KMS. Every message is encrypted at rest and in transit. Pay attention to the PubSub's access control node. PubSub is not associated with any specific IP address. This is relevant if you rely on IP-based firewall rules. The key points for IAM permission and the rules are Google Cloud PubSub allows for controlling access at a project topic or subscription level. So the IAM rules on the project level still are owner, viewer, and editor. But on the each resource level, for example, topic subscription or the snapshot or admin, viewer, editor, publisher, and the subscriber. You can review the rules table for more detail. PubSub IM API let you set and get a, a policies on individual topics and a subscription in a project. Service accounts are recommended for almost all user cases. Now let's compare the difference between Kafka and PubSub. Kafka and the PubSub are very similar to each other. PubSub is Kafka's alternate solution in GCP with no ops and serverless. I provide the comparison between Kafka and PubSub here for your reference. If you are unfamiliar with Kafka, then you should at least learn Apache Kafka's architecture and the concepts from Apache Kafka's website. The first difference is message delivery. Kafka promises to deliver messages exactly once. PubSub guarantees at least once delivery. But PubSub can work with Dataflow for exactly once delivery. The second difference is the message retention period. Kafka can consume messages published longer than seven days ago. PubSub's message retention ranges from 10 minutes to seven days. But you can store the post historical messages in a database such as Cloud Big Table or, or Cloud Big Query Data Warehouse. The third difference is on log compaction or random access. Kafka's log compaction ensures that Kafka will always retain at least the last known volume for each message key within the log of data for a single topic partition. There's no equivalent feature in PubSub and, and also the pack, uh, Compaction requires explicit reprocessing of messages or incremental aggregation of state. However, PubSub does provide a replay and purge messages. You can consider use the seek functionality to random message access. The seeking to attempts a timestamp will discard the acknowledged messages manually after a retention period. The last one is our message ordering. Kafka provides a keyed message ordering to promise the message ordering within a single partition of a topic. PubSub has an ordering key to guarantee the message successfully published by a single publisher for the same ordering key in the same region. I also highlighted the exam tips for you to answer the questions on Kafka and PubSub in the exam. The number one is always, always consider PubSub first for your answer. The typical messaging in the data analysis pipeline is PubSub to Dataflow to BigQuery, as I mentioned in the Dataflow versus Dataprog video.
data probe does not natively connect to the PubSub. Keep that in mind. If the question's requirement is to quickly lift and shift from on-prem to the Google Cloud or reuse the Kafka's features such as Kafka mirroring, random offset access, then you should use the Kafka or use the PubSub Kafka connector between the on-prem and the cloud. Or you can work the data flow with Kafka's I.O. for data processing. Please make sure to check the PubSub release notes on the latest GA features to migrate Kafka into PubSub before your exam. For example, PubSub's message filtering, message ordering, and dead letter topics. Now let's use the PubSub's last minute cheat sheets to take a look at some sample PD questions. Please read the question first, pause the video, and try to answer it to yourself. Ready? PubSub's message retention period is 10 minutes to 7 days, so we can choose PubSub for this question. PubSub uses timestamp for its seek functionality, so the correct answer is A. How about this one? Pause the video and try to answer it to yourself. Ready? This question requires you to do client-side encryption prior to sending your data to cloud storage. Two components need to be considered in this encryption at rest, cloud storage and Kafka load. So you need to supply your own encryption key as part of the API service course to these two components. The correct answer is D. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. See you next time.